a very good morning one and all who are present here this is gopal and uh, i welcome you all to uh, an interesting talk which is the second live session of my uh, channel and today i am really excited and really honored to have the famous scientist and a science writer professor tv venkateshwaran uh, uh, who will be giving a talk on importance of science learning and its opportunities so before we start i want you all to know uh, a bit more about uh, professor tv venkateshwaran uh, he is a science communicator science writer and the founder chief editor of science uh, india science wire and is a senior uh, scientist at uh, vigyan prasad a national institute for science communication which is one of the prestigious uh, institute of the country and i welcome you sir this is a great honor for me at the top i welcome sir thank you thank you very much uh, uh, mr gopal and uh, all the friends uh, let me share my presentation and uh, let me make a talk so what i was thinking was that about uh, uh, 20 minutes 25 minutes i'll uh, speak i'll say a few uh, things to you and then perhaps we can uh, get into some discussion okay so let me uh, start with uh, my presentation i hope uh, uh, yeah i hope uh, this is uh, visible yeah so let's uh, take a very simple question like uh, what is the shape of earth right so uh, i asked this question uh, in a school near madurai uh, about uh, uh, about 10 years ago that's when uh, my this whole uh, talk uh, kind of emerged uh well when i asked the question i mean immediately there was a chorus of answer that it's round so i asked back when you say round do you mean like a coin or a plate of course the students immediately said no 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 uh, we mean round like a ball okay uh, one can uh, quibble about whether round is a correct word for a ball no ball is a sphere but whereas uh, a circle is a round right um well i'm not uh, uh, here talking about uh, words that we are using so they had a sense what it meant right so that's good thing but then uh, i asked the question how do you know that the earth is shaped like a ball well there were only two answers one some set of students told that uh, oh our teacher told us another set of students told that oh it's in our textbook there was one uh, very bright girl Uh, who stood up and said that sir the photograph from the spacecraft show that earth is uh, uh, spherical very good uh, point but let's now discount the spacecraft because uh, human as humans we knew that uh, earth is shaped like a ball uh, for about last 1500 years that time there was no uh, spacecraft uh, i mean space travel is uh, only about uh, 80 years old you no know, rockets are only about 80 years old so there was no spacecraft in those days so there was no way i mean you could have seen the shape of earth from outside earth right so how did they come to know uh well i mean if you are a, a very rich person i mean you can take a space tourism and obviously you can look at the shape of earth okay so but the important question is how did the teacher know that the earth is shaped like a, a ball i mean you can say that the teacher's teacher taught him then if you keep on going like that i mean teachers teacher 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 i mean that's not a an answer right how did they know okay you are saying that i knew by uh, teacher but that, how did they know right so that's a question which is not answered by this answer well if you say that it's in the book but somebody wrote the book right so how did that person who wrote the book knew right so uh, this is not an answer so uh, we can clearly see that it's not answer now let me look at one book uh, for example uh, uh, vishnu puran or matsya puran i mean you might have heard the names of uh, vishnu puran and matsya puran uh, in both uh, this uh, puran there is a puranic cosmography what do you mean by puranic cosmography in uh, in that time what kind of imagination they had they thought that earth is shaped like this the universe is like this the sun is here moon is here you know when they had a they had a view of a uh, uh, cosmos so what is that so they thought that uh, earth is uh, like a round plate not like a ball okay a tali plate okay imagine a tali plate filled with water 
and inside it let's say there is a, a lotus okay with its petal open and in the middle is a lotus uh, seed pod so lotus seed pod uh, looks like a inverted uh, uh, pyramid right it's it's look like pyramid the pyramids are like this but uh, lotus seed pod is like this uh, bottom is uh, small uh, uh, as you go up uh, the size becomes bigger right so what they thought was that uh, this is a world the uh, lotus petals are the landmass so the landmass is surrounded by uh, ocean they thought that there was some kind of oceans okay that's a different issue okay so let's not get into that detail but uh, yeah so uh, the uh, petals are landmass in the center of uh, this uh, circular earth a plain circular earth not a spherical ball okay the plain circular earth there is this mount meru meru parvat some of us would have heard about uh, this uh, name right this was the uh, uh, picture of uh, bhugol in the cosmic uh, uh, i mean in the in the puranic uh, cosmology now they said that uh, 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 this is a, this is a meru that was used for the uh, uh, churning meru mantak we would have heard about it so the uh, meru is at the center the uh, different petals are the different parts of the world one of the petal is uh, bharata which uh, we call today as india and plus uh, the neighboring countries you know all these regions were called as uh, bharata at those days right yeah so they said the sun is going around the mount meru so imagine there is a huge mountain the sun is on the other side your side will be dark that's how the night happens so when the sun goes around and comes to your side your side will become uh, uh, bright so it will be day time the other side of the mountain will become dark that was the idea of a day and night in the puranic cosmos earth is not rotating around itself uh, it's not going around the sun but earth is so big and in the center there is a huge mountain okay a mountain unimaginable height okay and uh, the sun is going around that mountain you remember in uh, 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 mahabharat the story that uh, uh, they climb the mountain to reach a swarg basically the top of the mount meru is supposed to be the swarg okay so this this was the idea of uh, world uh, that existed in the in those time in the uh, puran that's what is written okay so if you uh, look at we have two textbooks or two texts or two books one is uh, matsya puran where the earth is flat round circular not a spherical round in the center there is mount meru and the sun is going around the mount meru. then you have your science textbook where uh, you uh, read that earth is spherical which is rotating on its own axis sun is stationary and because the earth is rotating the day and night is taking which one is true there are two books so if you say that it's in a book which book is correct right so either my teacher told or the book is it's written in the book does not make something true or false that's not an answer okay so uh, uh, let's look at this a uh, bit more one of the earliest person in india in india not the world okay earliest person in india to find the shape of earth was aryabhat okay so aryabhat had this question how do i find the shape of earth but he was standing on earth see if you want to find the shape of a tree opposite to you you can go around the tree and then you can find the shape you are outside the tree but if you are sitting on a tree uh, uh, in one point how can you know about the whole shape of the tree you can't you can only see your around right the whole shape so it is a big challenge if you have a spacecraft you can take a spacecraft go above and then uh, go outside earth go into space and from there take a look at the earth but that was not possible for uh, aryabhat there was no space craft right so what did aryabhat do aryabhat thought that i should find a yukti uh, some kind of a, a, a method by which i can find the shape of it we all have uh, played this uh, i mean you know that uh, pro- objects produce uh, shadows when light falls on it right so the shadow in a way indicates what is the shape of that uh, object okay it gives you a certain uh, uh, clues about what should be the shape right so what aryabhat decided was that suppose if i can see the shape of uh, the shadow of earth 
for seeing shadow of earth you don't need to be uh, outside earth right even if you are sitting in a branch of a tree you can see the shadow of the tree falling on the ground right from the uh, shadow falling on the ground you can know what should be the shape of the tree, right so you don't need to go out of the tree so that was the trick okay so that was the yukti that aryabhat uh, thought of so when you want to have a shadow you need three things you need a source of light the object which will produce the shadow and the shadow should fall on some screen some some screen it can be the ground okay it has to be some screen on which the shadow should fall if the shadow does not fall you won't be able to see it right so uh, if you uh, look at uh, uh, so aryabhat thought if i uh, observe lunar eclipse lunar eclipse occurs because of earth shadow falling on the moon right so if i look at lunar eclipse then i will be able to see the shape of earth shadow yeah so that was a tricky game so you have the source of light sun object that is earth and the screen is moon so when the earth shadow falls on moon you will be able to see the shape of earth shadow so here you can see a, a lunar eclipse in progress meaning that it is not at the time of complete eclipse but uh, in between when it has just commenced commenced uh, and uh, the eclipse is progressing uh, uh, can you see here uh, the uh, uh, light portion and the dark portion and then can you see the edge what is this shape what is the shape imagine think about it is the shape not a arc of a circle it's a arc of a circle right yeah so something that you can uh, see in a, a lunar eclipse is that the shadow of earth is a arc of a circle it's arc of a circle when the eclipse is beginning when the eclipse is progressing when the eclipse is uh, 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 you know covering even larger part of the uh, moon even larger part of the moon and when it is completely covered so which means first thing that you can observe if you carefully watch a lunar eclipse is all through the eclipse the earth shadow is a arc of a circle so you can see here right it's a arc of a circle it's a arc of a circle right so first observation that you find is it's a arc of a circle that's what the, uh, uh, that's what aryabhat did are but found that it's always arc of a circle second he also found one more thing if it is a arc of a circle i can uh, compute what should be the uh, full circle you know uh, ratio proportions you can use that and then you can come com uh, conclude the uh, it's a circle with a certain certain uh, diameter and so on so diameter when you want to measure in the sky you usually measure it in the size of the moon how much uh, bigger is the shadow compared to moon so what are you but found is the shadow of earth at the distance of moon shadow will be bigger if it is near shadow will also become smaller and smaller as you go for uh, go further right if the object and the screen the size uh, the length is uh, larger the shadow will be smaller if the length is uh, shorter the shadow will be bigger right so at the distance of moon the earth shadow was 2.5 times the width of moon. here are but as one important question we saw that uh, there is a progression right so when the eclipse is beginning what is the size of the shadow when the eclipse is uh, progressing what is the size of the shadow when it is progressing further what is the sh shape of the, i mean what is the size of the shadow shape we have found it circle what about the size is there a variation in size so are but found there is no variation all times throughout the eclipse the uh, size of earth shadow is 2.5 times the width of the moon so it's a stay stable now you can uh, imagine what all could create a, a circular shadow can a, a shoe box or a cuboid can it create a circular shadow no can a pyramid create a circular shadow no can a square create a circular shadow no can a rectangle or triangle create a circular shadow no so which mean there are uh, multiple geometric shapes which cannot create circular shadow so which means earth cannot be in those shapes you still don't know what is the shape of earth but you know that earth cannot be in those shape because 
the earth is creating a circulation right so that's the way science progress this is called as limiting so there are lots of choices before you started this experiment it could have been in any shape it could have been like a box it could have been like a pyramid it could have been uh, 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 like a, a cuboid no it can be it could have been anything right uh, uh, now you know that whatever is the shape of the earth it should produce circular shadow so what are all the shapes that can produce circular shadow there is a limitation a cylinder can produce circular shadow a sphere can produce a circular shadow a cone can produce a circular shadow even a coin can produce a circular shadow so which means if earth was a flat round surface it can produce circular shadow remember that okay so maybe even cosmic porosity Uh, uh, cosmic uh, i mean puranic cosmology could be right at this stage of your experiment it could be even right we don't know because if it was like a tali plate you know like a coin round it can produce a circular shadow we know it right can be any of this so what you have done is you have done a observation okay yet shadow is circular and same size then you make a inference if that is the observation there are only certain possible uh, uh, shapes which can produce circular shadow you come to a uh, inference now what is the time in which uh, uh, the eclipse lunar eclipse occurs let's assume the camera in which you are seeing my face okay so let's come to my face so can you see my face yeah i think you can see my face yeah suppose the camera is the sun and my ear head is the earth okay and my nose is where you are okay you are all sitting on my nose so my nose is now pointing towards the sun so the sun is on top of uh, my nose right so which means it is 12 noon in my nose. this ear and suppose if my mobile phone is the moon if the moon is here earth shadow will fall on the moon you will have a lunar eclipse so but this lunar eclipse is occurring when it is 12 noon at your location suppose if this location was like this sun is here your location is here so which means it is not 12 noon it is evening 6 o'clock and the moon is here earth shadow will fall on the moon you will have a, a lunar eclipse but now the eclipse is occurring at 6 o'clock in the evening we know that uh, lunar eclipse can occur at a different different point in time right it can be uh, early morning it can be late night it can be uh, uh, midday you know it can occur at uh, various times you look at uh, lunar eclipse timing you will find out just give me a second so uh uh what does it mean yes when it turns in different direction when it turns in different direction whatever direction it turns it is producing circular shadow key point now uh uh let's look at uh, my uh, slide let me go here so what is the observation whichever direction you turn the earth meaning that wherever uh, uh, whatever be the angle of uh, the, your source of light the earth is producing circular shadow but uh, if your uh, object is a cylinder only in one orientation it will produce circular shadow in another orientation it will produce a square or a rectangle so earth cannot be a cylinder by same logic earth cannot be a cone earth cannot be a circle because circle will produce a, a circular earth will produce a circular shadow only in one orientation you turn it the uh, uh, shadow uh, shape will change right only object which can produce circular shadow whatever be the orientation is here that's how aryabhatta came to the conclusion that yet should be spherical so he came to the inference 
that earth should be spent by observing shadow of earth falling on moon and then inferring and then looking at multiple uh, uh, lunar eclipses and then finding out that uh, whatever be the onset of uh, uh, lunar eclipse it's always circular every uh, uh, every place not only in your place but anywhere in the world it's always circular of course you would have not been able to travel to all over the world but to different parts of india okay uh, uh, and travelers coming from other parts you know merchants who come from other parts they also tell that it's also circular there you know all those kinds of stuff from all this information aryabhat came to the conclusion that earth should be spherical very interesting right aristotle also came to the conclusion that earth is spherical but by a completely different means so what he did was that uh, uh, he stood on the edge of a, a sea and then he was observing a ship going away so when the ship was uh, at a distance he was able to see the sail he was able to see the uh, flag he was able to see the uh, uh, hall that is a place where people stay and you put goods and all that right so he was able to see the uh, uh, bottom of the ship but when the ship went uh, uh, to a particular distance he was able to see only the sail he was not able to see the bottom at all and when the ship went beyond a particular distance he was able to see only the flat pole and when it went uh, even further the ship completely uh, became invisible i am not talking about ship becoming invisible because it became smaller and smaller when you when things go farther away it becomes smaller and smaller no i am talking about if you use a telescope still you won't be able to see it because in the curvature of earth it would have gone beyond your line of sight can you see here in the bottom that's a logic that uh, aristotle used that's observation that aristotle uh, did and then from that he came to the conclusion that earth should be spherical so what you find uh, uh, is that uh, whether you are aryabhat or aristotle science converges wherever you are you be in india you be in uh, 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 europe you be wherever science converges because it's about the nature uh, the reality outside us okay uh, it's not about our feeling it's not about our opinion no right so uh, the science converges now let's take another question we started with the question what is the shape of earth okay now let me ask you another question uh how do plants get uh, their mass you plant a small seed it becomes a plant the small seed is uh, having a very little mass a plant a tree could uh, be even weighing multiple tons right so how does it get its mass so is it through soil is the plant eating the soil or is it through water is the plant eating water and then uh, uh, storing it or converting it and then uh, that's how it is getting the mass you will be surprised to know neither it's air photosynthesis it's in the photosynthesis that uh, the plant takes uh, carbon dioxide and then uh, uses the carbon to make complex chain like uh, carbon and hydrogen and so on to make complex chain called uh, 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 glucose okay you might think that oh there is uh, hydrogen there is oxygen but then the amount of carbon is so substantial that uh, the uh, mass gained by that uh, plant from water is so small but the mass gained from uh, uh, atmosphere is very high both carbon and oxygen it takes from atmosphere okay co2 so this is how uh, uh, a plant actually grows but many of us don't think so right i mean many of us think that a plant eats the mud mitti ke ka ke plant grow karta hai you know this is how we think right so it's not it's not correct very false whatever uh, material that it is taking from soil very 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 minuscule in terms of its mass it's essential but in terms of its mass it's very very big so what is the point that i make i'm making that for science you need uh, observation and inference pratyaksha and anuman aryabhat found many things like it uh, rotates its own axis solar and lunar eclipses occur, occur because of shadow play there is no role for faith in aryabhat he gives public reason you know he gives a reason which you and i can test not only you and i if you are a american if you are a african if you are a japanese if you are a chinese if you are a russian forget about it if there is a planet somewhere else in the universe okay and there is a intelligent being over there 
that intelligent being can use the same logic of Aryabhat and come to the conclusion that Earth is spinning, right? If they come to Earth and observe uh, Earth's uh, lunar eclipse, they will find the same thing. They will come to the same conclusion. That's public reason. But actually, how did Aryabhat uh, find the shape of Earth? Actually, he found the shape of Earth because he dared to question the tradition. During the time of Arya, but everyone would have said that Earth is flat. No, because you are read, reading it in Machya Puran, you are reading it in Vishnu Puran, everybody is saying Earth is flat, there is a Meru, and people were believing it for thousands of years. But Arya but said that people believing for thousands of years doesn't matter. Does it have proof? Is it scientific? He asked that question, right? And because he dared to question the tradition, he was able to do this experiment. He did not accept the received when people would have told him that, uh, oh, this uh, uh, Purans are written by uh, Narad Muni. How can you question Narad Muni? People would have asked him, right? But he said, I don't care. Proof is what is important. In this whole logic, there is no role for faith. There is no role for uh, supernatural. There is no role for cultural belief. Remember that. It's observation and inference. Science. Right? So that is the heart of science. Even in his book, he writes, how did I find all these uh, important discoveries? He has done a lot of work, I told you, know, Earth's rotation and so on and so forth. So many things in his book, uh, Aryabhatiyam. There are lots of uh, things other than the shape of Earth. Shape of Earth is only a very small part. I just explained it because it's very easy for us to understand. He writes that I found by my own intelligence, Swati, that is, I use my intelligence I uh, uh, did uh, this kind of observation and then came to conclusion, which is logical. He did not say that uh, I sat under a tree and the God came in my uh, dream and then gave me this uh, knowledge. No. He says the Smati, my own intelligence. That's what Aryabhat says in his own book. Okay. But how do we, whenever we make claims, whenever we say something is true, Whenever we say, uh, this is how we should do, etc. How do we argue? There are three ways of justifying oneself. One is called pathos. Smriti. That's because uh, it's written in some book. Because uh, it is what uh, people believe. You know, that kind of stuff. Second is ethos. Which is uh, sruti. That's because everyone believes that. Everyone believes that uh, women cannot be equal to men. For what? Everyone believes doesn't mean that it should be true. Because everyone believed at one point of time Earth is flat, but Earth is not flat. Right? Lot of people in uh, India in those days believe that there is something called a Mount Meru at the center of it. Is there a Mount Meru at the center of it? Nothing. Earth is not uh, flat. It's a, it's a spherical object. In a spherical object, on the surface, there cannot be any center. There can be only the center to the spherical. At the center of Earth, there is only a magma. There is no mountain, right? So, I mean, even if there is mountain, it's, you cannot call it mountain. Mountain is something that comes out of the Earth's surface, right? It's a petrosion on the Earth's surface. No, it's not a mountain. There is no mountain. There is no Mount Meru. It's a fiction. It's an imagination. But then many people believe because everyone thinks it's uh, true, right? So that is one kind of argument. The third is what is called as logos or hetu. That's because of reason, logic. Science takes only the third. The first two, even though in our daily life we use it, that's wrong. That can lead you to wrong conclusions. Okay, And that's how Aryabhat found by uh, uh, sticking to hetu. He did not believe. In Smriti or Suti. He uh, uh, rubbished uh, Smriti and Suti. He uh, looked at Hetu and that's how he found, right? So there are lots of important questions around us, right? Like, uh, is it uh, evolution or uh, life was created? Is global warming true? We all believe that uh, there is some kind of a caste difference or gender difference. It is innate, natural, by birth. Is it true? Do we have proof for it? So, should uh, one go for universal vaccination? For example, COVID time, there was a lot of debates, right? So, how do you judge these questions? We need evidence. We cannot go by what everybody thinks. So, 
what was written 100 years ago right we need evidence we need uh, uh, observations uh, inference and so on right that's a scientific method so this brings into the question that uh, we need to put thinking cap okay we need to put science thinking cap so to be scientifically literate is to empower yourself know when someone else is full of bullshit so when when you are uh, scientifically literate you are empowering empowering yourself and when somebody is making stupid claims you will be able to immediately point out oh yeah this is stupid claim. so what is science education if i ask you the question what is the shape of earth if you tell me that oh it is sphere or uh, uh, geoid or something like that that is not science education that is one name that's one uh, word how do you know that earth is shaped like that do you know it that's a key question okay so science is not memorizing facts that's what but unfortunately we do in school right so for a question number four go to page number 32 uh, put a bracket from a fourth line go to a eighth line complete the bracket, memorize that, and then vomit it in exam. That's how we study science, but that's not science. Science is knowing how and why. Okay, Science is knowing how and why. And it's a way of not to fool ourselves, right? So yeah, science education needs to change. Science education should tell us why we should trust some claims. When there is a Kepler's law, which says that Earth is going around the sun in elliptical orbit, why should I believe it what are the evidence which says that uh, earth is going around in elliptical orbit how did kepler find it out that's a kind of uh, knowledge we should have if we know science otherwise we don't know science we have just mugged up some uh, words and then we are repeating okay so that's not science science is understanding how and why okay how and why understanding is what is science uh, our science education should uh, improve in this uh, particular manner. Uh, we hope that in the coming uh, days, uh, we will have a uh, better uh, way of uh, addressing science and science education. Let's hope so. And then uh, some of us are making an attempt to see that uh, uh, we will be able to get such a, a science education. With this, I will stop. We can have some uh, discussion for some time. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Professor Venkateshwar, for such a wonderful insight. And Can you be a bit really... louder? I can't hear you. I think nobody uh, will be able to hear you. Okay, okay. So, is it okay now? Yeah, better. Maybe you'll have to speak louder. Hmm? Ah, yeah. Okay, sorry. So, thank you, Professor Venkateshwar, for such a wonderful insight. And it was really a different way of understanding science. Uh, it was really uh, appreciable the way you uh, make the small things to understand all of us and so let us take up some questions from the participants who are there uh, if if some questions are there uh hello sir. Sharma. yes please yes good sir. morning sir morning yes sir uh, as you said that uh, we need to make a change in our way of uh, learning science exactly not learning science but how we are uh, giving it up to the next generation so sir uh, what are the steps that the Indian education system is taking? Yeah, some of us are making effort that uh, science textbook uh, should change, science textbook should change for uh, better. Where uh, the emphasis would not be on uh, memorizing lots of facts, but uh, understanding some uh, key concepts uh, and then uh, 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 actually having a small practice of uh, uh, you know, doing an experiment. When I say experiment here, I'm not talking about a demonstration. You know, when you mix a, a acid and a base, you are only demonstrating. You are not actually exploring. Uh, exploring uh, uh, something and then from that, coming to certain kind of inference as a classroom, uh, arguing about it and then coming to a conclusion that how far you can trust your uh, 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 conclusion. You know, a, a taste of a scientific method. We are arguing that uh, those should be the uh, key aspect of uh, science education in school. Uh, you can do it from uh, much, much uh, early classes. I mean, even from uh, uh, primary level, there are ways in which you can do. For example, very simple question. 
maybe uh, some of you can try it at home and then uh, uh, explore yourself uh, let me ask you a question suppose you take a bucket of water okay and then you put a pumpkin in it will it float or sink what about bindi what about tomato what about potato well uh, let's say you take a green tomato meaning that which has not ripened and then uh, take tomato at uh, different levels of uh, ripening and then uh, try this experiment will it change or will it be same right i don't have answer okay even if i have answer giving that answer is going to be of absolutely no use right okay so even in uh, primary level you can do very interesting experiments like this okay let's uh, look at this i uh, measure uh, the uh, height of this uh, figure and then uh, my palm my uh, arm can i find some uh, ratios is there a ratio it's a simple thing that uh, children can do right if you know uh, addition and uh, division even uh, a fifth standard child can easily do it so uh, exploring world around us and then uh, coming to certain kind of conclusions inferences reasonable uh, debating with each other and finding out whether how far i can trust this uh, uh, conclusion these are all some skills that we can uh, learn from young age and some of us are trying to uh, argue that this should be the heart of uh, science education not merely remembering various names or dates or uh, some facts like that etc okay uh, i think questions are over so uh, i have two uh, questions professor so yeah hold your mic please uh, okay so i have few questions uh, professor so Uh, like uh, these days, uh, last uh, means one one day before uh, the CBSC has announced the report for class ten and uh, class twelve. So a lot of students uh, are now planning to take up sciences and even other subjects like commerce and arts. So, but uh, for the science students, it has been re- really uh, like a very linear uh, path of selection. Like they are after taking science, they are going up to whether for an engineering or for uh, medical, like J and NEET exams. so uh, i cannot see uh, students taking uh, any other path uh, when they choose science so what you say about this uh, is there any uh, other uh, path of making their careers regard other than engineering and uh, medical see uh, if you come from a very well off family uh, where you have some uh, property from uh, your grandfather or things of that kind uh you can be adventurous you can say that oh i don't care i will study whatever i want maybe i'll uh, learn to do uh, ceramics pottery and then yeah sure but if you are coming from a lower middle class family like most of us okay you want to come up in your life you want to give a good life to your father and mother when they are old okay you want to have a better life compared to you know so quite obviously naturally many people will think of a certain professional education like uh, engineering or doctor or uh, uh, mba i won't say that that's wrong i mean that kind of attitude come from a certain elitism and i am not subscribing to it if some of you are interested in doing engineering or things please go and do there is nothing wrong okay you are not doing wrong by joining a engineering college or a medical college or mba that's first thing i want to make it clear but if you are interested in science then there are options that's what i want to talk about okay if you are really interested in science there are uh, many options let's take for example mathematics many people are not aware about the opportunities in mathematics uh, emerging opportunities number 1 all of us should understand there is a shortage of mathematics teachers school level college level university level everywhere there is a shortage of mathematics teacher because not many people actually take mathematics and uh, do higher studies in mathematics so if you are interested in maths please go ahead and do there are uh, bright possibilities other than teaching okay other than teaching now for example there is a emerging market for uh, insurance right so insurance companies need mathematicians because not exactly uh, 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 a certain skill in mathematics like for example statistics statistics is something very much needed in uh, what is called as actuarial uh, professions okay so uh, insurance even law firms etc uh, require mathematicians of this kind then of course the uh, world is becoming uh, big data 
so if you are looking at uh, uh, big data analyst uh, system analyst if you are looking at uh, uh, coding you know all this area are connected to uh, mathematics so there is a huge uh, uh, emerging area as part of the fourth industrial revolution ai you know all this kind of uh, machine learning and so on and so forth so there is a uh, very good uh, opportunities in uh, mathematics for uh, uh, higher studies now coming to uh, chemistry uh, 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 i mean uh, new chemistry is coming up what is called as uh, green chemistry and people are so now looking at uh, looking at uh, how chemist biochemistry you know so now a lot of biochemical engineering is coming up as a, a important area so you need biochemistry uh, people with the biochemistry background so chemistry or biology as a, a potential so uh, all this uh, traditional sciences have potential provided that you have interest and you are willing to put that effort okay so that's uh, some and substance that i would like to say uh, look for uh, for example uh, the uh, central universities uh, central universities have uh, integrated courses which is uh, bsc and uh, msc integrated courses look for that uh, there are interesting courses in uh, icer uh, uh, try to apply for that i mean if you are interested in basic sciences so these are all uh, are some good colleges in your uh, nearby area certainly uh, but uh, remember that uh, if you want to become professional after studying basic sciences you may have to study at least till a masters if you want to become uh, 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 take a job after a graduation of course you can do that uh, by writing uh, various uh, entrance exam for bank exam and this and that etc that's a different issue but if you want to become a professional like a you know, system analyst etc etc then you will need to do at least till masters that's something that you remember and then uh, plan your research okay. So thank you so much for the the all your mic part oh, again i'm sorry so thank you so much for sharing these uh, things and uh, one again one more important question that uh, the students uh, really want to know that uh, what kind of support and assistance uh, do our government provides for the bright students who are taking uh, seriously uh for the science subjects and i mean there there are is there any uh, scholarship programs that uh, uh, help See, them to uh, right now this? the scholarship program is available in ice for a limited number of uh, students uh, called uh, inspire scholarship that's only available for limited number of uh, students okay so you may have to look at the uh, ice website for the current uh, terms and conditions because it has been changing in the last few years okay so whatever is the current uh, uh batch what will be the rule you will have to take a look at that uh, that's a only uh, major uh, uh, source of uh, support uh, that might be local uh, you know funding agency local philanthropic agency that i am not sure i mean there are many okay but with regard to uh, uh, a large government system this inspire scholarship is what is uh, available so thanks for speaking to us in the presentation it was very nice and all of us learned a different way of learning sciences and thanks for all the suggestions that you made and really it will make a lot of difference to the students those who are uh, going to choose their path in sciences and uh, thank you so much for coming thank you so much for this uh, wonderful opportunity and i hope uh, i was able to have some reasonable conversation with you with the uh, best wishes thank you